Hey everyone, it is Carrie from Reset Brain and Body here for the final week of Narcissism Week for Mental Health Mondays. I am so excited to cap off this series with you. We have had so many people interested in this topic and obviously it's because it's a hot one. Most likely you have experienced narcissism in your life and you are curious how to learn more and how to learn how to overcome. So first of all, I just want to recap a little bit of maybe how you know if you have been impacted by someone who is narcissistic. And so some of the feelings that you might have in having grown up with or in a relationship with a narcissist is maybe you experience low self-esteem, lack of trust in yourself. Um, maybe you have a hard time trusting other people and perhaps engage in unhealthy relationships. Perhaps you yourself look for validation a lot and look for approval from other people because you are so entrenched in your own self-doubt and inability to trust yourself and lack of confidence. Maybe you have some perfectionism because for so long you have had to prove yourself and try and gain approval and avoid disapproval. And so perfectionism on the extreme end is something that you've done in order to cope and try and again, be that most perfect self so that the narcissist in your life would finally give you the love and attention that you've been seeking. And maybe you have a hard time advocating for yourself, standing up for yourself, asserting yourself, and perhaps also you really struggle with just that general inner critic in your head um, and being really self-critical. So if any of these things sound familiar, you may have experienced narcissism, narcissism in your life. Um, again, perhaps a loved one, someone you grew up with, someone that you're currently engaging with, um, and therefore you might find this topic incredibly helpful as you navigate, okay, what next? How to move forward and if you have missed any of the other series please go back and go ahead and look at the previous videos to give you more information in depth about narcissism and also gaslighting which was um, a video that we did before the series started that was really really popular and kind of kick-started this whole series based on all the interest with gaslighting okay so as we've talked about before one in 20 people uh, exhibits narcissism or narcissistic traits. Now, narcissistic personality disorder is super hard to diagnose because most narcissists don't actually seek treatment or therapy in order for us to then have the data to report on. But generally speaking, if you are in a crowded room, one in 20 people, one in 15 people is gonna be um, narcissistic. And again, that's the difference between a narcissistic personality disorder and someone who's just generally narcissistic. So again, these people are people that are really wanting the center of attention. They kind of turn the conversation always around to themselves. So even though they may not be that grandiose person that's you know putting on a whole performance in front of people, there's someone who again, wants the conversation to always be about themselves. They have a hard time listening to other people. They really lack empathy. And so what that means is that they truly don't understand or don't put themselves in someone else's shoes and that builds on then their inability to hold themselves accountable and take ownership for the ways in which they have negatively impacted other people. They just truly don't have that self-awareness to say, huh, wow, like I'm really sorry that that happened and I'm really sorry for my part in that and that must feel like horrible for you and I am so sorry that you're going through that. Instead, it's all about them, right, and their own journey and how they might be struggling. A lot of times they are someone who acts like the victim or the martyr Again, they need a lot of validation, a lot of approval. They're always looking for ways to um, stand out and be superior to other people and even negatively superior, right? Like their life is worse than everyone else's. No one else has had as unfair circumstances as them. So it's not always like, I'm amazing, I'm so special and look at the amazing things in my life. It could be my life is so horrible because I'm uniquely um, kind of put off in this position and they're blaming the world around them. It might show up as someone who is depressed, overly anger, uh, and you yourself in interacting with this person, you feel like you have to walk on eggshells. Uh, you're kind of in this cycle of wanting approval and then trying to avoid disapproval, wanting approval and avoiding disapproval. Uh, you feel like your emotions are belittled, you've been bullied by them, uh, and that's kind of where that gaslighting comes in, right? Because that gaslighting is basically 
the intention to erode your own self-trust and build up self-doubt within you so that you have to use them to build yourself up. And a lot of times they threaten things, um, they threaten abandonment, they threaten that they're going to even hurt themselves if you were to leave them. And again, it kind of makes you mistrust yourself and mistrust reality. Um, so those are some of the things that you might see as you're trying to spot the narcissist in your life. And again, you might be able to pick up on this just because of the way that someone makes you feel. And then in addition to being able to step back and look objectively at, huh, okay, wow, this person definitely is displaying some of these more narcissistic tendencies. Okay, so that's kind of the, the fundamentals, how they make you feel and how to spot them in case you're still confused and you're still like, I don't really know if this person is or is not, or if you are or are not displaying some narcissistic tendencies. But one of the most important things, and we get asked this all the time, is do narcissists change? And the general answer is no. And this is something that really is difficult for people to handle because they really want this person to change. They really want a better relationship with their loved one or a better relationship with a colleague. Um, they really want this person to be the person that they need them to be and the person that they actually truly believe that they can be. And a lot of times if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, then you might be in a codependent relationship where you want to fix them. You want to help them do better and you just keep not being able to do it and you keep kind of bringing yourself down by trying to fix them. And so it's really, really, really difficult to finally accept the fact that like, wow, they're never gonna change and nothing I do will help them be a different person. This is just who they are. And it, it sometimes feels like you're giving up on them, but in reality, you're practicing those boundaries. And so the other question that we get a lot is, well, can I just beat them at their own game? Can't I just outsmart them? Well, the reason that they're acting the way they are is because they're engaging in, in these behaviors that don't involve empathy and don't involve compassion. And you don't really want to sink down to that level, right? Like if you really look at it, you want to hold on to your humanness and like the age old, well, not really that old, but the saying goes, when they go low, we go high. You want to stay high, right? You want to stay human. You want to stay empathetic. You want to stay operating with equality and fairness and compromise. You don't want to sink down to their level of trying to one up and gain more attention and get validation. That's not the way to beat them at their own game. So no, you don't want to engage in like become like type of uh, different uh, activities. <laughs> So the other thing is that we get from people is, well, um, how am I supposed to continue to operate with this person in my life? There's no way that I can get rid of them in my life. Because a lot of times we say, okay, just try and, and not have this person in your life. It's a toxic relationship. It's not serving you. Well, a lot of times people say, well, that's impossible. This is my uh, sister or <laughs> this is my brother-in-law or someone that truly is never going to go away in their life. And so not only can we not expect this person to change, but we then need to change our expectations and how we operate with someone who's narcissistic. So we need to first label it, understand, okay, this is what I'm facing. This is who this person is. They're not going to change. This is how they make me feel when they're in control and when I'm giving them that control. Because a lot of times the, the reason they make us feel that way is because we're ill-prepared. We're not seeing it objectively and we're still stuck in this, well, I don't understand how they can keep doing this. Like, don't they understand how much this is hurting me? Don't they understand how this is negatively impacting other people? And all that's doing is creating our own suffering because we're not recognizing of like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, they, they don't see that <laughs> and they're not gonna change. And so we again need to change our expectations. We need to adapt. And so we need to first grieve the relationship that we want to have had or we want to have in the future and recognize that that's just not gonna happen. And so therefore you need to say, okay, I'm never going to have that relationship with my brother-in-law that I thought I would have. And that's a bummer. And so how can I then just grieve from that and accept it? And then again, pivot my expectations. 
how can I continue to set boundaries with this person so that if they do have to remain in my life, I don't get pulled into their toxicity. I don't get pulled into their game. I don't ruin my own vibes, my self-esteem, my day because of this person and their inability to really understand how they negatively impact people. And again, their denial <laughs> of how their actions need to be changed or again, take accountability for those actions. And so again, we need to change our expectations. We get asked all the time. This is the number one question. Well, why can't I just call them out? Why can't I just say, hey, you're a narcissist. You're acting narcissistic. You need to get your stuff together. Oh my gosh. That is what every narcissistic wants, right? Because they want that attention. They want you to have completely erupted at them. That's them getting what they want. That's them continuing to have control over you. So no, it is not ideal and not recommended to call out a narcissist and tell them that you think they are a narcissist. There's more delicate ways to go about it if you truly believe that they are capable of changing. And it's things like encouraging them to do more self-awareness, maybe talk to a therapist, although they'll probably gaslight <laughs> the therapist and a good therapist will see right through that. But they're going to need to somehow go on a different journey, maybe of mindfulness and meditation, but you telling them all the ways in which they have hurt you and all the ways in which they've scarred you and all the things that they continue to do to hurt you is not going to change it. They're just going to gaslight you because again, they lack that self-awareness. And so it is not, it is not recommended that you call them out and have an intervention and have a whole discussion thinking that then they're going to change because all that does is set you up for false hope. And all that does is drain your own energy. And that's exactly what they've done to you your entire life. And they will continue to do. And that's just not fair to you. Your energy is too valuable. And so that's when I go on to this next point of, okay, how do I maintain my energy? Well, you need to maintain yourself, your sense of self. The stronger you are, the more you trust yourself, the more you eliminate your inner critic, the more you build your self-esteem, the more you eliminate your self-doubt, the stronger you are against a narcissist. And the stronger you are from being able to protect yourself from falling into their games, their traps, their conversations, etc. And so maintain a strong sense of self. And so how do you do this? Because here's the thing, when we've engaged with a narcissist or there's a narc someone who's narcissistic in our life, it's really easy to repeat that cycle. And truly, it's because of trauma, right? Because more often than not, whomever this narcissist is in your life is also engaging in behaviors that are really traumatic for you. And we don't always have effective ways of coping with trauma. And so a lot of times we then engage in our own numbing out and avoidance type of tactics, just like we've talked in previous weeks that at some point, this person's self-esteem was so eroded that they created this boundary with themselves where they weren't going to actually feel their feelings and instead they were going to avoid their feelings and create this kind of different reality where they were above all of it. And so really, if they had actually addressed their low self-esteem, addressed the trauma, they probably wouldn't have continued to then engage in, in behavior that then caused trauma to the per people around them and to the maybe the next generation and that's kind of how we get that intergenerational trauma right and so you yourself you want to stop the cycle you don't want that trauma that you felt impair the next generation and then the next generation and the next generation so feel your feelings more in the relationship that you thought you wanted or the thought that you should have could have and recognize that it probably is not ever going to be there rebuild your self-esteem, rebuild your sense of trust, talk to people, get positive validation from someone other than the narcissist in your life. Talk to people who can help you see things really clearly and build you back up in a way where you're, again, you can have trust in yourself. Allow yourself to be vulnerable. Allow yourself to listen and own your mistakes and take accountability, to not be defensive and instead sit in the pain and the suffering and admit it and see it and be really, really, really authentic. Always compromise and be willing to hear someone else out and truly practice being empathetic. These are the ways in which you will stop the cycle and you yourself won't engage in narcissistic behavior going forward as your own coping mechanism for the trauma 
that you've encountered. And more importantly, you want to heal the relationships that you have. You might be able to look around and you say, wow, like I have a lot of narcissists in my life. What does that say about me? Am I someone who's more prone to codependency? Am I someone who has this really weak constitution and I really need to build myself up and kind of do a cleansing? Get some help in order to go on that journey. Because again, you don't want this to adversely affect more people in your life your children, your children's children, because of your inability to truly be truthful with what this is, and then because of your own negative coping mechanisms for dealing with the narcissist in your life. It all comes with being honest with yourself, which is something that a narcissist cannot do and is unable to do and doesn't ever want to do. So you, by looking yourself in the mirror and being honest with yourself, is the first thing and the most important thing that you can do. So I hope this series has really helped you. Please continue to ask questions and we can continue to engage in this topic. Going forward, we're gonna do more of an open Q&A series for these Mental Health Mondays. So I'm really looking forward to continuing to get your feedback and always DM us anytime you need. Lastly, if you need help or you need help for someone in your life, reach out to a therapist. We have therapists at Reset seeing clients both in person and virtually. In addition, working with children age 11 or 10 and up through teenagers and adults. So we are here for you and we look forward to hearing from you.